Speaking of legends, uh, we do have Impact Wrestling coming to the Capital Region, Albany Armory. It's going to be uh, Bound for Glory Friday night, biggest pay-per-view of the year for them. And then uh, the fallout on Saturday night, we'll be there. And the man uh, who we've become friends with is Mr. Tom Hannafin. How you Hello, doing, guys? How, how is everything going? Where are you now? Are you home? Yeah, I'm at home. Uh, I live now in Conshohocken, Pennsylvania, just outside Philadelphia. So I'm I'm really excited about this weekend shows because I can just drive up there. Except all the coastal flood warnings have gone on. So what I think was like a three and a half hour drive is probably not going to be like five and a half or something. So it's going to be a real adventure on Thursday. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll all be worth it because Bound for Glory. Yeah. Like, so we've um we've been made aware that. My former classmate, Mike Quarter, the owner of Tech East and the Albany Empire's former classmate, Bobby Fish, now back with Impact. Oh, and yeah, I had no idea you guys were connected. That's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So class uh, – well, I, I shouldn't say the class because when I look on his Wikipedia, he's two years younger than me somehow even though we graduated together. Um, <laughs> I don't want to blow up his spot. But uh, he, he's he's back with you guys. So, like, we, are, we were all part of the group, and um, uh, Mike Quarter, who's my boss, reached out to him. Said, "How's everything going?" He said, "Mind your own damn business." So, uh, you know, so we're all very close. But uh, like, what what is so? What is this match that that fish could potentially be in? So on Friday night at Bound for Glory, live on pay per view and Fight TV, Bobby Fish will be participating in the Call Your Shot gauntlet match it is going to feature 20 competitors both male and female i think that's a really exciting part about this the winner gets to call their shot for a title match of any impact title of their choosing anytime anywhere now i came from wwe for those of you that might know wwe this is similar to what the money in the bank contract represents but this is still very different in the way that you capture it and that you have to go through obviously an intergender gauntlet match to get to it it is uh, also similar to what impact wrestling does in regards to for those that know impact very well the gauntlet for the gold so you have multiple people getting involved in the match and you've got to eliminate people and then it comes down to two competitors at the end and those two have to either pin or submit each other and then you get a winner so i am really interested in this because if bobby fish shows up and say, as he has said, go after the Impact World Championship with the Call Your Shot opportunity. He can do that literally anytime, anywhere. And that's a very different world for Impact Wrestling with Bobby Fish as champ. And the crowd going to be on his side, you hope. The louder cheers in the Capital Region and everything else. I, I want to dive deeper into the match, but I don't for a broadcasting sense for you. Do you enjoy a type of match like that? Is it more challenging? Because even you described it, it's truly unique in the professional wrestling history of the world. Yeah, there's a lot of little things, you know, wrestling promotions tend to take from each other a little bit, but then you put your own unique spin on it. So I like that it's for any championship at, at any time. So for instance, say you get a tag partner, you can go and do that. If you want to go after the X Division title, which has its option C clause, you can win that championship, maybe even go after the world title if you care about the 20 years of history behind the X Division title, or you can go for the world title or then also having a multitude of women involved in this really changes things for the knockouts, uh, the knockouts world championship, the knockouts tag team titles. Don't forget about the digital media championships. So there's a lot of options. But for me as a broadcaster, it's very similar in uh, execution, I'd say, to Royal Rumbles, which the Royal Rumble is so much fun to call because there are definitely instances where there are certain competitors that get announced ahead of time. So you know they're coming out. You just don't know necessarily what order they're coming out. And then there's surprises, and there will be surprises this uh, Friday night at Bound for Glory. So I encourage everybody to check it out because you never know who could show up and then as a result win that call-your-shot opportunity can change the game. Tom Hannafin with us right now, and of course, uh, he'll be here uh, Friday and Saturday night at the Albany Armory. Uh, get your tickets now, impactwrestling.com, if, if there's any left even. And uh, the, the digital media champion jumped out at me because I've, I've met, I met, you know, I met Jordan Grace. I met a couple of these people before, but uh, the, the idea of digital media champion just screams nerd. To me, like, how <laughs> say that to Jordan next time. Well, no, yeah, no. definitely say that to Jordan. Definitely say it to the current <laughs> champion, Brian Myers, because that would make me laugh. So he's right. a Long Island guy, so he he loved that. <laughs> yeah. Like, like how, do you, how do you get that one? The one who blogs the most from his mom's basement? <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually have full-on wrestling matches for it. However, there's a, a higher frequency for those matches to appear all across digital media and not just our home uh, network of Access TV. 
I love it because there's so many different instances throughout the history of wrestling. Uh, you've heard of television championships, and that is something from the old territory days where that whenever you were on television and you were the television champion, you had to defend it. So it makes it really, really interesting. We have different rules for that, but I, I really like it because in this day and age, digital media dominates and there's a guy who used to be our digital media champion named Matt Cardona who at one point uh, named himself the internet champion when he was going by Zack Ryder in WWE so I think the influence of those two championships kind of led to the uh, arrival of the digital media championship I just I, I mean it makes so much sense once you say it but again the initial visual of somebody just being like, you know, like just running, just running out and be like, yeah, there's a lot of options. If we can get as many neck beards involved as possible, you know, we're, we're all about inclusion uh, in impact wrestling. So who right. wants to go after it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'd be perfect for it, man. I used to have more hair that's moving to my neck for some it's reason. My, it migrates over time. And I'm sorry yeah. about that for that's you, not for me. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to give you the cheap pop answer here about Albany's history and wrestling. So many different things, whether it's the Ric Flair Royal Rumble win way back when, whether it's an edge cash in, like we've seen these incredible Stone Cold's beer truck, like whatever it is, we go to the different variations of professional wrestling companies and everything else. But when you had the opportunity to call impact events, are there certain cities and maybe Albany's in this mix of you're looking forward to seeing that crowd reaction and that engagement? Because again, you as a broadcaster, like, you can feel that, man. It's like it, you can have that happen when you have great wrestling fans behind you. Yeah, and Impact really does have a loyal fan base. It's awesome. Um, I, I think uh, Dallas for sure is near and dear to my heart just because that's where I made my Impact debut at the Hard to Kill pay-per-view back in January. That was such a special night and special weekend for me to be embraced by the company and by all the talent and everybody backstage. And then the fans on top of that, I was blown away. Uh, but Albany's cool. I've had a chance to work there a couple times with WWE. Um, I think doing, you know, Raws and SmackDowns. I don't believe I've ever done a pay-per-view there and somebody can correct me on that. But yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it because I, I feel like at this point in my career in wrestling, I'm checking off things on the proverbial bucket list. So to be able to say that I've called every major event for impact wrestling and now the biggest event that impact wrestling has to offer um it's humbling um it, it's very very special to be given the the title of being the voice of the company i don't take that lightly at all so I, i'm really excited about it and uh at the end of the day like when we call it the biggest event that impact wrestling does i don't have any inside information in terms of what they're doing special in terms of the venue or for the for the show itself i'm maybe going to learn some more in the next couple of days but like I'm really excited to see what we have in store because, like I said, with the Call Your Shot gauntlet and probably a lot of other situations, there's going to be some surprises. So it wouldn't be the biggest event of the year for nothing. Tom Hannafin with us, Levac and Gaz. It's Tech East Tuesday, and I see that nerd Brian Myers has an open challenge for uh, for that digital media championship. And I, I challenge him to the one-chip challenge. I think we should go back to Hokey oh. online uh, or, or Tide Pods. I don't really care. I feel like I'd probably get hurt less if I did Tide Pods. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, careful there. That the the chip thing I loved because like the one with Shaquille O'Neal on uh, Inside the NBA where he was like, "It's nothing, I got this." Ooh, <laughs> he just loses it a second later. Those are the best. So, uh, yeah, I'll tell Brian Myers it, just clip this and tell him that you called him a nerd, and let's see what happens in Albany. Yeah, listen, I I'm I'm not scared because I mean, what's he gonna do? Ugly this up? Come on, it happens. That's why I'm, that's why this whole visual medium we've added to the show was stupid, but but we did it we did it anyway. So it's what Mike and Mike was doing. Yeah, that was 20 years ago. We don't need to keep doing this. Right, and they had like makeup people and like they you know they you know, pro athletes and whatever. And now you know here we are, two fat guys from freaking Cap region. Who were good on radio, and all of a sudden, guys goes, people should see us. I'm like, oh, you want pity votes? Okay, should cool. is a strong word. It's doing some it heavy is. lifting. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, no disrespect. You guys are wonderful, but <laughs> no, I'm with you. I, listen, I understand. You know what? Imagine how much worse I'm gonna look after that nerd Brian. <laughs> He'll mess you up. He'll mess I'm, you up. I'm gonna uh, slowly, awkwardly pivot away to uh, the Believe Network. Shout out to our guys, Bron and Cam. By the way, those guys do an awesome job. Yeah, they're great. Denver radio row, man. Talk about good-looking people, unlike us, too. Ron, Cam, awesome people. You do some great Penn State football coverage over there to the Penn State show. Let's talk a little college football. The Nittany Lions, man, they're having a great season so far. 
Yeah, uh, for those that are interested in this crossover between wrestling and then Penn State football, uh, you can check out my podcast called Pater to Penn State Football Show. It's myself and uh, former Penn State and NFL and XFL quarterback Matt McGloin. And every single week we're giving you previews and recaps of all the games. Uh, we're diving into a bye week right now. Penn State just came out of a rainy, ugly win at home against Northwestern. Uh, we're all trying not to get too excited because I think a lot of people have been down on Penn State the last two years. Uh, I've been one of those people. They were perfectly 500 between 2020 and 2021. So they seem to be moving the right direction. They're number 10 in the country. They're 5-0. and They have a bye week here, and then it's a really brutal stretch in October. You're at Michigan. You're home against Minnesota in a whiteout, famous whiteout at Beaver Stadium. So that'll be great. And then you're at Ohio State to end October. I don't see how Penn State comes out of that with at least one loss. So this could be a very different opinion that I have of this football team in just a matter of weeks. But right now, enjoying the bye week. Everybody's trying to get past this rain that's going on, especially here in the Northeast. And uh, my, my best, everybody in the Southeast that really got hit hard by Hurricane Ian. But we are all just trying to bunker down right now and wait for next week. And everybody on the roster that needs to get healthy, get healthy. But so far, so good. <laughs> Well, listen, please tell McLoin that as a Raiders fan, I appreciate him trying to make that steaming pile of a roster that he had around him good while he was stuck. He had a good stretch, Raiders. man. He really he did. did. He did. He, and it's, if there was anything around him, if they hadn't burned the whole team on Chibusto Russell picks, we would have had a shot of him actually being something with the Raiders, I think. God, I still love that story that I've seen all over the internet. Like, they sent him, like, blank DVDs, and then he's like, oh, what'd you look at? He's like, blitz packages. And they're like, there's nothing on those tapes, Jamarcus. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? But he, but he had a perfect recipe for purple drink, and that's that's yes, the soul. Yes, I, I, you know what? If like, ask yourself if you were given how much was he given as part of his contract? He was the first overall pick. It was hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, would you continue to play the most dangerous sport in the world, or phone it in and try and get fired so that you get your guaranteed money? I, I'm stupid. I would try to earn the money until <laughs> I got hurt. I mean, I listen. I just, I just challenged Brian Myers to, uh, to. Uh, you did. You yeah, absolutely yeah. did. So, <laughs> I'm obviously not that bright, but I would try to earn the money, and then, and then when I realized I couldn't, you know, that's when I would have a soft tissue injury. <laughs> that's <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I want to, by the way, for next weekend because we know college game days in Lawrence this weekend. Penn State, Michigan seems like a very likely game day spot. You mentioned the whiteout coming up later in October, though. As a Syracuse football fan, they are the only school, one of like eight in the Power Five that hasn't had game day, and we think it's coming to the Carrier Dome for NC State. Uh, unbiased as much as you can, as you do bleed Penn State colors, do you think that's a game day game coming the 15th, or does my orange have a shot host in it? Um, I think the Orange do simply because Penn State does not. Penn State's been picked up for big noon kickoff on Fox, and they'll be playing Michigan at noon on Fox uh, on October the 15th. So I don't believe you're going to have any conflict unless Fox completely changes their mind on that. But I think with the sheer volume of Syracuse grads that work in sports broadcasting and especially work at ESPN – Dude, of all the times to get back on the horse since like Donovan McNabb was playing for Syracuse, now seems like it's going to be the time, especially before maybe they get the meat of the ACC schedule and they get knocked off or something like that. But Syracuse has been good. I've enjoyed watching them so far. It's nice to see them revitalize, and it's always nice to see one of these legendary programs come back to the former glory, at least starting to get back to that. That is a great point. Like everywhere we go, there's a Syracuse broadcasting person around. And it's the the fact that you they're not just getting random, you know, appearances anyway, because that's totally, you know, on brand for the four letter network. Like I, I <laughs> it shocks me. That's a good like I, I'm shocked that you didn't get to to have your your game game day experience this year. That that quote right there is going viral. I'm just gonna chop that whole thing up and save that, frame that, like play it on a TV at my house. I could even answer that. Voice. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, so my experience with Syracuse, uh, I had actually applied to Syracuse when I was in high school. Um, I think in order to get into uh, what is it, Newhouse is the, yeah. the name of the College of Communications. You needed a 3.9, and I was like, what? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, have, I had a good GPA. I think I was in somewhere in like the 3.4 to 3.6 range. I can't remember. But I was like, you know, no slouch. But while they're like, oh, no, you need a 3.9. I'm like, great. I don't think I'm going to this college. So uh, I went <laughs> went elsewhere. <laughs> so that's but see that's why you're down to earth and not you know, like the rest of them. I'm just saying. Yeah, exactly. Definitely not a hater. Uh, my my sister's boyfriend is a Syracuse grad. So I also support Syracuse. So here we are. 
but yeah, you don't really have a choice at that point. I no, no I don't. <laughs> uh, Tom Hannafin, you're going to be here uh, next weekend, uh, Bound for Glory at the Albany Armory, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to an impact back in the Capital Region for the first time in way too long. Um, you know, this is going to be a lot of fun, and if that if that nerd Brian Myers wants to go one chip challenge with me for for the digital media title, I'm I'm in. I'll do it. I'd I'll love to see it. I'd love to see it. Yeah, uh, for for anybody listening, that is this Friday, October seventh. It's live on pay per view and Fight TV. If you can make it out in Albany, uh, not only will we have the live pay per view on Friday the seventh, but on Saturday the eighth, we have all the fallout from Bound for Glory as we tape a few weeks of television for Access TV. Tickets are on sale now at ImpactWrestling.com for both those events. So if you can't make it to Albany, please check out the pay-per-view. Please watch on Access TV. Uh, as someone who's worked in wrestling now for 10 years, and I can you can say I'm biased because they're giving me a paycheck, this is the best wrestling show that you can get right now. So I hope a lot of people come out and enjoy it. And uh, Team Captain Brandon Cisse is going to be there Saturday night. Yes, we didn't even talk about the NAL. Yeah, some gear. Can yeah. we get this guy Tom Anderson I'll some Empire some stuff, it, I know. Can I talk about the? We got to talk about a little arena football. Yeah. It was, so the the Empire, you know, win another championship. I'm now actually uh, splitting time. I'm part owner of the Columbus Lions now. So I'm. Oh I'm yeah, you and I had talked about that a while yeah. ago. That's yeah. great. So that's been uh, that's been a lot of fun, nice challenge. But the guys need me this weekend because you guys are here. So uh, north of the Mason Dixon line, and I get to uh, I get to go back to being uh, you know a three time champion Empire guy instead of a uh, no time NAL champion yet Columbus Lion guy. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. That's really cool. No, I've been an Arena Football League fan since the Philadelphia Soul got started in the uh, the Nick Browder era at quarterback. For anybody that remembers that, that led to Tony Graziani and some really nice years and a couple uh, Arena Football uh, championships. So I, I always liked Arena Ball. So you and I connected. Uh, I think it was during Super Bowl season last year, uh, uh, the three of us for that matter. So I was like, oh, I am so into arena football. And I don't know anybody else that is also into arena football like I am. So uh, I'm glad you're working for both teams, man. They need you. Excited to do it and, and excited to be a part of Impact. And uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, get in there, have a great time and, and not embarrass ourselves. That's that's the goal. That's See, the goal. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> You'll be <laughs> fine. You'll be fine. Thanks back, for having me on, on guys. Hand, who knows? With the, with the mascots running around, you never know what could happen. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for having me on. And hopefully I'll see one or both of you guys this weekend. Absolutely, Tom. Yeah, you will. We'll be there. We'll definitely Sweet. be there. So we'll see you soon. Tom Hannafin, and everybody, Impact Wrestling, impactwrestling.com. Get your tickets now for Friday and Saturday. And uh, we're gonna have a blast. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Awesome reconnect with Tom right there. Yeah, really cool. It's been too long, man. His voice so is too cool. good. I don't like his voice. Oh man, the I don't microphone, like the look, the TV. Voice is too good. Too good. If you're looking to look good, Lily and David Fine oh. Jewelers is the spot. Look at that. That's how you work it. Take notes, kids. Ten year anniversary. See by if the that way. nerd Brian Myers can go to to Lily and David. All this is getting tagged, by the way, on the video of Tom Hannafin. So there you go. Lillian David find you. There's 10-year you know anniversary. On Saturday, right? Like, I'm going to get my ass kicked on Saturday. Myers? I think you can take him. Stanley Cardona's bit, digital media champ. You got to be kidding me. Get out of here. <laughs> Route 50, the shops of Wilton is your spot for Lily and David Fine Jewelers. We hope you support them. If there's anything you've learned from Impact Wrestling or Levac and Gaz, it's that family owned and operated businesses, especially with the holidays on the way, is where you want to go. Guys, we're talking 70% off orange marked jewelry. If you know what I'm talking about, you can stop into Lily and David Fine Jewelers. If you don't, head over to their Facebook page for more information. Lily and David Fine Jewelers, where you can find out about the 10th anniversary celebration going on. Guys, I'm telling you, you're going to wait during Christmas and the holidays. You're going to say, what am I going to get her? Now's the time. You don't have to tell her when you bought it. Take advantage of this great deal going on. Support people like Alyssa and David who have helped Lamac and I. There's the wedding band right there. Wow, my fingers look bizarre on that visual <laughs> sign. Oh, God. Lily and David Fine Jewelers, even if you have weird fingers on the video, they will help you find what she's looking for more importantly. Lily and David Fine Jewelers, when you stop in this 10th anniversary celebration month, tell me you heard about it from right here on Levesque and Gaz.